Bolts Excavator. So this is a 200 LC that we've had for a while now. And, um, you know, it's been a decent machine so far. The track motor uh, blew one of the main seals and these seals are $500 a piece. So the question is, why did it blow? And so here's some of the lessons I learned along the way. That is super slimy. And so fluid was building up in the crankcase of the travel motor and couldn't escape fast enough. So it's got to go somewhere, right? And so it blew one of the little seals out. Oh, this thing's going to come right out. pushed all the hydraulic oil into uh, the gears of the track. After that happened, uh, it blew the main O-rings that keep all the gear oil where it's supposed to go, and uh, those are $500 for a set from uh, the local dealer. So, called around, talked to a few people, they said, hey, uh, make sure to line for the pump or the, the travel motor uh, isn't restricted because if it is um, it will do that so I took an air compressor and blew some air through the line and I could hear it bubbling in the hydraulic tank uh, when I did that so I assumed everything was good with that and uh, tore the motor apart and I'm gonna keep calling it a, a, a motor it's a propel motor is what they call it in, uh, in the service manual. Um, but anyway, the, the propel motor tore apart and I found that the parking brake clutches um, were damaged. So just like an automatic trans, you have steel plates and you have clutch material and they're stacked. And um, the material is basically like kind of like sandpaper and it's glued to steel plates. And that's what gives you your friction and your stopping ability. Um, so those, all the material has gone off that. Um, looking at it further, getting into it, I uh, just didn't really see too much. You know, the bearings looked in great shape and everything. And um, the output shaft had a little wear on it, so I went ahead and replaced that. And not seeing anything really else, um, I decided to replace um, the pressure relief valves, they're called crossover relief valves, and what they do is uh, when you max out the pressure to the track, it's supposed to let it go somewhere, right? And it can let it go, it's supposed to let it go into the return line, um, but yeah, I've heard people say, well, it can go to the case drain as well. So, you know, I've never been into one of these before, and so, you know, I, I looked around and I think I called the equipment distributor and they wanted like $300. Well, okay, a little backtracking. First I called to see how much it would be to rebuild. Oh, this is gonna be interesting. Oh, okay, where we go? There we go. Um, and they wanted, I think it was like $10,000 to rebuild the travel motor, the propel motor. And, you know, I'm one of those guys that if somebody else can do it, uh, I can probably do it. Or at least I'm going to try, you know. Uh, $10,000, you know, is a, a bit of money to spend. So, like I said, I tore it apart, found that damage, but couldn't really find anything else. Now that thing came out beautifully. Called around on some used track motors and... I think the cheapest we found was like one in state and it's used um, unknown hours on it and uh, do I want to do it that way or this way? I don't know, we'll do it this way. And they still wanted like five grand for the thing, right? I called around a couple other rebuilders and same thing, you know, basic price is around ten thousand, eight to ten thousand. Um so I decided to tackle it myself. So Put it back together and, um, you know, decided to give it a try and it 
once again blew the seals right out of it. This is a little on the sketchy side.
website I could think of, running part numbers, uh, sending messages to, to sellers on Alibaba, because you gotta understand that these John Deere's, it's not just a John Deere excavator, it, it's a lot of your excavators. So before we get into the, oh, you know, it, that brand sucks, this brand sucks, they're all the same, okay? This, this excavator is a Hitachi, basically, it's, it, it's a Hitachi EX200, Dash three or dash five. I'm not exactly clear on the uh, the classification of the last number, but even the hydraulic pump or propel motorized part says Hitachi right on it. Anyway, so I messaged some Alibaba providers, and that that whole process is a nightmare, um, and didn't really get anywhere. Um, I wanted just to order. There was a kit I found, right? It was like twelve hundred dollars. And it was it was the the plate, the pistons the rotor, a seal kit, it was like everything I needed and then more to put this thing together, right? And so it's like, for the for the price, like there's no way you could beat that. It's less than the one part. I'll just buy that. And it, it didn't end up working out. And one thing is you're trying to message sellers that are in China and um, they're on the other side of the world. So, you know, they like to get back to you at four in the morning and they're ending your day when you wake up and, and it's just, it, it takes days to send a couple messages. So you need to be efficient when you message them. Anyway, so that didn't work out. They were gonna look into it, they wanted measurements, it didn't seem like they were real sure. Even though I told them what their kit number was, I said, I just want this, and they wanted to do their due diligence, which is great if they would have finished what they were doing, but they, they didn't, so. So I'm digging around, I'm like, man, we're gonna have to spend that money on that one plate. And one day, I don't know, you know, maybe something good to say about algorithms, which isn't much. Um, and coincidentally, um, okay, so Google put in front of me an ad for a kit, like I was looking for, and which is awesome. Um, we're almost in a pile here. And coincidentally, I've uh, bought parts from them before, like little things, seals, whatever. They're out of California. And, look at that, uh oh, oh, stay. Ah! some parts from this company before and I decided to uh, dig through their you know eBay store and I was typing in part numbers from the dealer for the things that I was looking you know, I was trying to get and they ended up having basically the same kit you know and whether it came from the other provider or not or maybe it's the same people I don't know but um, I didn't have to deal with any actual person I could just click buy and then it was on me to make sure it was right. But going over part, uh, going over the part numbers and everything, you know, I was pretty certain that that's that was for my machine and the research I did. So I paid, I want to say it was like twelve hundred dollars for the kit. Then let's talk about the super expensive parts. The cheapest, because I think the dealer wanted like eight nine hundred dollars for like this valve right here, right? And this is your uh, pressure release crossover valve right here. And um, the, come on, focus there, guy. And so um, this is what I tried first. I ended up getting like a pair, 
aftermarket or whatever for like 300 bucks, right? So not cheap, but definitely not 800, 900 bucks a piece. This is your rotor right here and your piston assembly. So the way these work is a fluid goes in, well, it comes through this passage and here, look, I guess we'll discuss what this plate is. This is that plate that they wanted like over $1,400 for by itself, right? This is all it is. It's a piece of metal with some uh, brass on it, right? So fluid comes in one side or the other, depending on which direction you're trying to go, right? And then whatever other side isn't half fluid coming in, it ends up being the return. The way this works is this sits on this, like that, and can spin. And when fluid enters, if you could, this might be hard to see without a light. When fluid enters that passage, it has to go somewhere. And it pushes this out just like a hydraulic cylinder. And this sits at an angle against its, its plate, right? So when it pushes against, it wants to spin this to the higher side or further away, right? Which causes it to turn, which then, kind of like a revolver, right? Spins and then pushes the next one. Spins and pushes the next one. And these, it just keeps on doing that. And that's how it turns. And that turning here pushes, well, this goes into a, a thing. And that turning, as a result of that, push turns a shaft, which then turns all the gears. So when I went through this, I mean, I, I didn't see anything wrong with fitting these pistons. They're, they're tight. They fit in there good. You know, I didn't see anything besides a, a little nick that I don't, you know, didn't think really affected anything. But, hey. Uh, I haven't been in any things enough to know uh, otherwise, so. Um, so, it, like I said, it, it bothered me that even after all these parts, that it may not have fixed it. And it, and it wouldn't have, like I said, that, that line being partially restricted further up um, was, I think, a big part of it. I do notice that there is less K, um, propel motor fluid return after this, so we did take care of some wear items. Um, I think that travel motor is going to last many 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 years I, I honestly i think it'll as old as that machine is if that's the original then it should last uh another you know 20 years or so because i think that's a, a 2000 model um but yeah just excavator parts are are just ass around any heavy equipment is just ridiculous so you need to definitely do your research uh, when you're buying parts or you know um be sure of the problem before you just go throw money at it uh otherwise it might cost you more in the end um, if you don't know what you're doing. So, but uh, for anybody that it can, you know, has the patience to sit there and read for hours and hours and hours and, and scour the internet, um, you know, it's, it's worth uh, doing things sometimes yourself. So, but, um, so yeah, um, I have, I think in the kit, they gave me, uh, here's those clutches. So let's talk about the clutches. I first, well, so I bounced around a little bit, sorry. This is the first seal that blew as a result of the pressure uh, exceeding the case. So this goes between the hydraulic motor and the gear case. And it built up enough fluid and it just blew this, I mean, it blew the steel, it blew everything out. This is a new one. Um, and then it went into the main uh, gear case, filled that up full. But all this was because, and I'll show you how these work. This is exactly what an automatic transmission in, say, your truck looks like, right? So you got, you got a steel, and you got a clutch. So this is your clutch material. And what it is, it's, like I said, it's almost, it's almost like sandpaper, but it's, like, really hard. And it's uh, glued um, to this ring. So then you layer it like a sandwich, right? So clutch, steel, clutch, steel, clutch, and we must have needed to start it with a clutch because I have an extra. And then that's what a pack would be or like right there. So this material broke all off and then that's what got jammed up in the line there and uh, caused all these problems. Actually, if it wasn't for this stuff getting stuck, um, this machine would have continued uh, operating every day. 
Um, it's just, you know, if you parked on a hill, it might try to like roll away on you because that's what these are for. These are to stop everything when you let off the controls um, to keep the track from freewheeling. So they're important to have. You don't want a uh, 40 pound pop excavator uh, chasing you down a hillside, you know, when you go to lunch. So I'm um, glad those were replaced. So anyway, um, so I ordered these parts. They uh, took like a week to get here. Not a big deal. Um, pulled them all out of the box, and now I have something at least to compare it to, right? And you know, going through, and I, I can't see anything that's different. You know, I, I actually pulled out a, a digital caliper and started going through, and I measured twenty thousandths of a difference on that uh, uh, brass plate, right? And. So I'm not super excited or, you know, or think that, hey, that's it, Eureka, I found it. Um, but we got the parts, so we're putting them in. So I go through and get it all back together. And I'm just going over everything a second time, right? So I pulled, I even pulled the parking brake clutches back out and, you know, looked at all the bearings and everything and just not not seen anything that I missed. Now, I pulled off the, uh, the return line and the last few times I worked on it, it was, you know, at night because it was, you know, I get off of work and come home and that's what time I had and it was always dark out. You know, I had a, had a light but it wasn't really good. You know, like I said, I, I pushed compressed air through the return line before and I could hear it bubbling in the tank, so and I thought it was good. Well, it had flow, but it didn't have the appropriate flow. So uh, I took the line off at the other end and I blew backwards and found all the clutch material that was uh, missing from the clutches. So the lesson learned, I guess, is, so a couple things, if I would have bought a ten thousand dollar rebuild right i would have took the pump off and taken it to somebody um whether it was our service provider for the area or any you know shipped it off to a different state to something that rebuilds and stuff um we would have installed it after ten thousand dollars and it would have blew anyway again and they wouldn't have warrantied it because I asked them about if there was a other issue with the machine and they said no that's that's all on you so I'm glad that we didn't go that route I mean it sucks that um, you know I didn't notice it the first time or scrutinize it more you know I thought that it was you know it flowed air so it was you know good enough but it just was partially restricted and um, So I got this thing back together yesterday, and now I'm just screwing around with it a little bit, trying to put some hours on it. Um, a couple of things I need to fix before it goes out to the job site. Um, but, you know, um, so if you ever got an excavator that blew a final drive, um, not the gear portion, but the hydraulic propel motor, double, triple check your K-strain line. Um, it, it will uh, save you some aggravation. Um, you know, I don't feel too bad about it that it went the way it did because uh, we discovered a lot of other problems. Like I said, the, the input shaft, or I guess it would be an output shaft, uh, needed to be replaced. So it needed to come apart for that. The clutches were shot, so it needed to be for the parking brake, so it needed to come apart for that as well. Um, Uh, while we were waiting for parts, this thing had a leak in the main pump assembly for like the gear case where all the pumps come together is what the gears in there. And so I pulled that out and when I pulled that out I found that there's a coupler that goes from the motor to the pump and it basically got fingers with nylon in between. And when that nylon 
wears out, it just bangs back and forth. So every time we shut this thing off, you hear it go, clunk, 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 clunk. And that's why. Um, the So having that apart, we're able to get that fixed, reseal the pump. Um, you know, so now I'm pretty confident. I mean, I put a few hours on this thing, tracking it around and digging holes. And I'm, I'm fairly confident that this thing can go out to the job site now and do work. And, like I said, it could, could have been cheaper, sure. Um, definitely some cheaper $10,000. And, um, you know, I, I learned some skills, you know, some knowledge by doing it. Uh, now next time, you know, I might even take apart the other travel motor uh, as preventative maintenance. The, um, you know, in case those clutches are starting to come apart on the other side, I'll, you know, it'll be a lot cheaper for me. I, I have an extra set of good clutches for this thing, so it'd be a lot better for me to pull it apart before it fails and get those swapped out uh, before it blows a $500 uh, ring. So then, it, you know, will actually end up costing me a bunch of money. Um, but all in all, uh, it's a good learning experience. And if anybody has any questions, you know, um, the pumps, well, they may have slightly different parts. They're, they all work on the same theory and principle. So uh, I'm definitely no expert, but if you are already got it apart, you're trying to tackle it yourself, if you would like to know more about it, um, you know, send me a message, and I will do my best to try to help you through it and talk to you about whatever um, I learned along the way. Also, um, if you're interested, I'll put the link in the, um, in the description in the bottom to the place where I bought these parts. Um, I'm, I'm all good with people making money, but holy crap, does a dealer want a lot for the same thing? And I can't say the quality is any different. It is literally steel parts. They don't feel different. They don't look different. And uh, like I said, with this, this thing's a Hitachi. It's it, it came from overseas anyway, so I don't think you can say that. Oh well. You know, they're not American. I'm um, pro buy American, but the whole excavator's not American. What are you gonna do? And until I, somebody tells me um, that there's an American company building parts for this thing, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> but if anybody knows of a, a company that builds affordable parts for excavators in, in the US states, let me know that too. Um, but yeah, they're doing pretty good. Otherwise, um, man, it is muddy out. This is uh, not the greatest day to, to be doing this. That is soft. That is real soft. All right, let's try to clean up some of my mess here. Uh, stick is for swinging like out and in with the stick. 
and then there's what's called like backhoe controls, which is where the left does your swing and your up and down, which is how this machine's set up. And it's not um, the most common for excavators to be set up that way. So I kind of got used to um, the other way. And if you talk to anybody that, you know, is operating machines, uh, and some people are better at it than others. Um, for instance, uh, my dad has been operating equipment for over 30 years, and he can't switch back and forth. He's just always known backhoe controls, and that's why this machine's set up that way. And whereas me, I, I haven't been deeply rooted in one long enough for it to for me to be stuck on it. But um, yeah, I'm trying to get back in this. Oh, come on, there's a root swing of things. See if I can get that with a tooth.
don't realize until uh, something goes down how much you uh, need it or struggle using another piece of equipment. This thing, I mean, if we had to rip that tree out with uh, like a bobcat or something or a, a backhoe, it would not have been that easy. Uh, let's see if I cannot crush my semi or my truck. But anyway, yeah, it's uh, it's good, you know. If uh, I'm not saying it's for everybody um, to take things apart, you know, there's some people that uh, maybe shouldn't. But so I'm happy to have this machine back together. We have a subdivision job that it looks like we might be starting here soon, and we'll definitely need this machine on that job. Um, I also have a, a couple dump trucks that might be getting used on that uh, job site. So if you like that kind of stuff, you want to see more heavy equipment, or, or um, I do some other things too. I have a, a drift car, um, so it's a uh, RX-7 with a turbo LS in it, uh, six speed. Uh, I take that out a couple times a year. Uh, that's fun. So that's uh, you'll find videos of that on my channel. Um, uh, sometimes we hit an off-road park. I got a couple buddies off-road, so there's there's all sorts of things. Um, not exactly sure what the channel is going to be about. I think it's just about know what I do and various things if you find cars trucks heavy equipment any of that stuff entertaining you know then it might be something you want to check out um, I'm not gonna beg anybody to subscribe but if you uh, like that stuff then don't forget to so I uh, appreciate it and we'll see what we get into next